minus 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Everyone in the LCC, maintain your positions in your consoles. Unmanned supply vehicles to the International Space Station are their lifelines. It's not just that hardware comes up and experiments come up. Food comes up, clothing comes up, water comes up, oxygen comes up. Everything you need to keep an astronaut happy and thriving. Every single bit of cargo in that spacecraft is measured down to the ounce. Every payload that comes up is essential. And when there's a crash, not a shred of it survives. Cargo vessels launch from Earth around 10 times a year to resupply the space station. But planning for each launch begins months in advance. The orbital accident took place in 2014, and it was carrying supplies necessary for Kelly and Kornienko's mission several months later. We lost uh, some hardware. I had some personal uh, clothing in there, but not really much. With the exception of my undergarment for the um, spacewalking suit uh, that blew up there. And that, for me, of course, was a very unfortunate news because it meant that I would not be able, in any case, to do a spacewalk. Station, this is Dan Hewitt in Mission Control. Houston, how do you hear me? Hear you loud and clear, Dan. Help me. You tweeted out, you know, just kind of reminding people spaceflight is hard, but tomorrow is always a new day. Do you care to elaborate on that a little bit more? You know, while flying in space, uh, you know, building these uh, this space station, I think it's the hardest thing we've ever done. And it, uh, you know, continues to remind us of that. It's a very challenging environment. But, you know, when something like this happens, we just have to kind of, you know, lean forward, look ahead, keep, keep moving on. Good day from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, where a Soyuz U-class booster rocket is poised for launch 25 minutes from now to deliver more than three tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the Expedition 44 crew aboard the International Space Station. Three, two, one. Maximum thrust and liftoff. The uh, flight of the Progress 59, the launch and ascent and climb to orbit all uh, was nominal. A uh, series of telemetry uh, problems uh, were detected. As of this time, no docking attempt will be made. The Russian flight controllers are off uh, trying to devise a troubleshooting plan for dealing uh, with the Progress 59 problems. I really thought it was just a minor problem. And then, of course, the next news came that uh, it wasn't going to arrive at all. We started to speculate what the impacts would be, you know, what was on there, what supplies were we missing, that uh, Terry Anton and I would be asked to stay longer. On a military deployment, getting unexpectedly extended at the last 
minute is not, usually that's not good, you know, psychologically. For me, it was actually a relief that I had more time to do some of the stuff that I wanted to do, because there were still pictures I wanted to take. There were still videos I wanted to do. If you're an astronaut flying in space, you got to look at that as your last flight. And so you got to enjoy it. And I've got the rest of my life to be on Earth. Sunrise here, so it's going to be tough to see anything. This is our window on the world. Coming into morning, so there's the, the dark night is passing. And it's morning again in space, 16 times a day. There's my ride back to Earth. I'll be back on the home planet in two weeks in that vehicle right there. I'll just watch the planet go by here for a minute. The Russian flight control team is uh, monitoring all of the Soyuz systems for the return home of three of the crew members of the International Space Station and a completion of 199 days in space. The space station has enough habitable room as a six-bedroom home. Now, that's a lot of space, and you can get lost in there fairly easily. But when you're the only people around, you need one another's company. The number of people aboard can fluctuate from anywhere from three all the way up to nine briefly. But it's at those three moments that things get lonely. You're rattling around in a big habitat, a place that you've perhaps by now become bored with being, and you need the company of other people. This is Mission Control Houston. I am ready for the event. That's been on everyone's mind. How are the supply levels looking for uh, you guys on board the International Space Station? You know, because of the last two, uh, you know, vehicles that we we did, that didn't arrive, I'm still consciously thinking about, um, you know, maybe using all the food we have, uh, water. I'm definitely thinking about that. You know, our waste hygiene compartment consumables that are sometimes a limiting factor. We're trying to use those up as uh, much as possible. What's the crew's, you know, level of anticipation to get this next cargo vehicle on orbit? Well, uh, you know, third time's a charm, I hope. And, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that, that we get this one, obviously. Five, four, three, two, one. Engine sequence start and lift off of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. T plus two minutes. Altitude 32 kilometers, speed one kilometer per second, downrange distance 13 kilometers. And we appear to have had a launch vehicle failure. Standing by for some information. Even before the astronauts come to terms with the effects of three failed launches, they have to deal with a more immediate and menacing problem. Earlier this morning, there was a late notification of a possible conjunction with a uh, piece of space debris identified as an old Russian satellite. 
Station Houston on two for Scott with regard to late notice conjunction. You go ahead on two, Jay. Scott, we wanted to sync up with you and the entire crew here. Uh, I know Gennady was talking to Moscow, but we'll get you what we have at the moment in preparation for you closing hatches. Copy. Ever since the first satellite launched in 1957, we've been leaving junk in space. There's now a massive debris belt circling the Earth, made up of millions of particles of various sizes. NASA tracks the bigger ones, the most dangerous ones, and is always alert to when one might be threatening the space station. In the event that the spacecraft is in danger, the astronauts must climb into their Soyuz, close the hatch, and be ready to cut loose and fly home. And one more request. If you could power on the Node 2 camcorder and point it into the module, that'd be great. Is there a procedure from, uh, from this step, one that jumps out at me is the airlock emergency pressure equalization valve? And uh, how about relative velocity? Any idea? Checking. Turbo reports closing velocity of 14 kilometers per second. Copy. The time of closest approach of this fragment of space debris is 11 minutes from now. Go for no two starboard hatch. I'm going to Moscow for Gennady. Yes, sir. Gennady Ivanovich, на время одиннадцать тридцать у нас связь будет отсутствовать, поэтому есть рекомендация приступить к конфигурации сейчас. Хорошо, выполняем шаг первый. Принято. Мы со своей стороны тоже. Как общее настроение, экипаж? Боевое. Рад слышать. Какое настроение? Это же не первый раз уже происходит, Господи. Ну, лучше реже, чем чаще. Понятно, я. And use the my good uh to open the PMM hatch. That's affirmative. And then uh, obviously you'll be on the Russian segment and uh you and Kanadi take whatever actions are required over there. Members of the expedition inside the Soyuz will close the hatch to uh, seal it off from the station. As the IMV gets shut down, you'll probably start hearing those fans spin down. Enjoy the quiet. We're just inside one minute from the time of closest approach. Мы открываем, да? Хорошо. Москва ждем еще, да? Ну, все, момент прошел, выходить. And he has just uh, notified of uh, an all-clear 